Thank you. Well, thank you so much for coming. Uh, it's really important that people in this community see this film because um, it's my educated guess that these dolphins that you have in your community are from Taiji. You saw the violent capture. That's how the four dolphins that are here were captured. And so now you are connected to Taiji. Uh, we know that the dolphins came from the Osaka airport. And that tells me the only place they could have been captured is Taiji. That's the only place they're capturing dolphins today. And it is indeed these captures and the traffic in captive dolphins from Taiji, from the cove, that is the economic underpinning of the dolphin slaughter. So these four dolphins that you have in your community are connected to Taiji. And I came here to support the effort to uh, get them out of here. Hep HEPCA is leading the charge on this and they need your support. We need to send a very powerful positive message, uh, not positive, but a strong message to Japan, the Japanese government, that you don't want their captive dolphins in your country. This traffic in captive dolphins from Taiji and the slaughter will continue until people put a stop to it. And it's really the consumers who can make this happen. Don't count on governments to do it. It's not going to happen that way. It's going to be consumers. For example, the Dolphinarium, and I was there yesterday, so-called Dolphinarium. Actually, it's a hole in the ground out in the desert. It has city water, water that you get out of the tap, uh, bags of salt and chlorine, artificial water, and they call it a dolphinarium. And if the tourists who come here become educated, they won't buy a ticket. And that is the solution. Don't buy a ticket for a dolphin show. And so people who see this film uh, will think twice before they buy a ticket for a dolphin show. So if you can close the dolphinarium, make sure that it's not successful, you'll be sending a very powerful, positive message about Horgata's respect for nature. And I think that's very, very possible. In fact, I'm sure it's going to happen because this is a very environmentally conscious area. Uh, I was out on the, in the Red Sea a few, two days ago with uh, Michael, the dive master, and we saw many dolphins underwater. And any of the tourists coming to this wonderful community can see dolphins in the wild. Why in the world would they buy a ticket to see a dolphin in a hole in the ground in the desert? So HEPCA needs your support. They can't do this alone. It takes the divers, the diving community, it takes the, uh, the tourists, uh, the people who book the tickets, the tour, tour guides, it takes everybody. And that's the, 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 the gentle, peaceful, lawful way to make sure that this dolphinarium does not succeed. Uh, we don't know what the fate of these four dolphins is. They're in very bad shape. They're living in a villa in a space smaller than behind the bar over there. If you go out on one of these boats and see dolphins in nature, you'll notice that they move many miles throughout the day, about 40 or 50 miles in a day doing many different things. And anybody can come here and see that and see dolphins as they really are. And I knew about this community long before I came here, because I'm a diver, and I know that this 
people have respect for this community. And it's so unfortunate that you are now connected to Taiji and everything that you saw in this movie. So the work is about breaking that connection and sending a message that you don't want dolphins in the desert. There are dolphins in the desert in America, in Las Vegas, by the way, and they have a very high mortality rate. I don't believe the dolphins can survive in that facility I saw yesterday. That they're, they're coming out of the villa and they're going into a hole of the ground in the desert. They won't survive there. And I base that on my 50 years of working with dolphins. HEPCA found a place. They will thrive temporarily. It's a... Uh, I don't know exactly the name of the area, but I got in the water and I, with a face mask and I checked it out. The water is clean and it's clear. The temperature is good. And they could heal there because it's natural seawater from the Red Sea. The, the ocean has healing properties. There's a rhythm to the sea and, and uh, tides and currents and they can heal there. They cannot heal in the desert. That is not going to happen. And I'm going to go out on a limb and predict that they will die in the desert if they're not taken out of there soon. So I'm a dreamer, as I say, and I'm dreaming of the sending these dolphins back to Japan with the message, thanks, but no tanks. I know that seems impossible. It seems like an impossible thing to send them back, but it is possible. I remember a whale, killer whale, an orca in Mexico that was in the process of dying. And a group of people, actually I work for those people, Earth Island Institute, rescued Keiko, who starred in the movie Free Willy, and there became a worldwide movement to get Keiko out of the Mexican Dolphin Park and back to Iceland. It costs a lot of money. But there are people out there, individuals, private people, who paid for that, and the community, and schools, and children. So maybe we can launch a campaign to send these dolphins back to Japan. They can't go back to the cove where they were captured, obviously, because they would end up in somebody's lunch. But they can go to a place like Makura Island, where they are respected. Dolphins are respected there, and they can be released back into the wild. And maybe we can't pull that off, that dream. Maybe it's not going to happen. But we should try anyhow. Just by trying, you're sending the message. This is what you're trying to do. You're trying to send them back to the wild in Japan. So I think that should be the goal. There is no way they can survive here. So think about that. And please offer your support to HEPCA. They're doing a great job. And it's very difficult. There's a lot of politics involved.